Hello, everyone. I am at the Nexico booth with Chris. Chris, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing, man? Another year, another show. <laughs> yeah. We... So what are you showing at the booth this year? Sure. Well, right here behind us, we've got our first showing of the Aurora Pro Mark III. Mark III? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, the big thing that we wanted to showcase was, other than the integration with the rising mm -hmm. screen mm -hmm. and with the cabinet, mm -hmm. that we've got the virtual masking feature on mm -hmm. to help remove all the letterboxes when you've got any cinema that you really love, but you want to make it take a little less space. Okay. Okay. So virtual masking now, huh? Yes, sir. That's a really cool addition because a lot of movies people watch are, are in 235, right? Yes. But you still want to be able to enjoy a movie in, in uh, something in 16 by 9 when, when you do like a TV show or sporting Exactly. Events. Yeah. So having the ability to switch back and forth and then mm -hmm. with a the rising screen adjusting the screen as you need exactly. to. Exactly. Another that's reason that's to get a motorized or a rising screen. Exactly. Yes. So so I will tell you that I have I was impressed with the Aurora Pro, the original Aurora Pro. Oh, then I was you. very impressed with the, the Mark II. The black levels, the picture quality is 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 very, very good. So the three, is it any brighter? Um, what are some differences also between the Mark II and the Mark III? Right. So um, based on customer feedback. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are going to increase the lumens on this, so mm -hmm. we're trying to aim for at least 3,000. Okay. That's going to be the uh, estimated goal. Mm -hmm. And then we want to keep the contrast better, mm -hmm. if possible, mm -hmm. get up our dynamic contrast to 100,000 to 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've updated some of the chipset mm -hmm. in there, so the iris should be mm -hmm. more responsive, just mm -hmm. even better at doing all the scene adapt that we've been trying to build out this last year. Yeah, so the yeah, so your SAE technology, was that scene adapt engine? Yes, that's right. Um, has been really good at um, basically, basically with a projector like this, you have a DOP, mm -hmm. you have a laser dimmer, and then sometimes you will have an iris. And then all those are just tools, but the processor is utilizes all of those tools to, to maximize the amount of on-screen contrast. So the goal is to give you inky blacks without crushing highlight details. Exactly. But then when you get to something bright, iris opens up, um, laser fires all the fires up more, and then um, now you end up with bright scenes without blowing out highlights. So it does a really good job. It's actually one of the best out there when it comes that. to that type of processing. So I'm excited to have a little bit more, a little bit more bright. Many people consider the um, the Aurora Pros as the best projectors for more of a cinematic, darker viewing experience. But having a little bit more brightness means that I can actually do, um, it even works even better um, during the day. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to showcase here: having a lot more ambient light coming in, but mm -hmm. still showcasing what it can look like if you've got. Um, a place with a lot of windows, <laughs> and okay. you can't necessarily build a okay. dedicated dark room okay. theater. Okay, so so um, no launch date or pricing as of yet. Um, we have an estimated launch quarter of Q3 of this mm -hmm. year that we're aiming to try and get to. Mm -hmm. uh, price is unfortunately not yet determined, so okay. we will we will aim to get it as good as we can. Okay, and now you're also doing a couple of other um, things in the booth. So another one too is um, the Nova Mini. I love that little projector. Because oh, um, it has a lot of the technologies found in your bigger projector in an incredibly compact unit, because that even has SAE in it. So the black levels are surprisingly good for a compact projector, and it's 1200 lumens, yeah. and supports 3D, and to me that's one of my favorite um, portable projectors that are on the market. Oh, that's very kind of you. Yeah, and you actually have that actually being displayed over here, yep. and it looks it looks really, really good. Yeah, we just, again, we wanted to showcase it so people can see it and have a chance to see what it functions like when there's light mm -hmm. and in a semi-dark room, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, like on a, on a 95 inch screen, yeah. it, it kicks butt. <laughs> you know, even if you go up to 100, a darker space, but literally on a, like an 85 to 90 inch screen, you can use it throughout the day, which is really, yeah. really cool. Now, of course, you also have some other rooms, like you have a 150 inch oh, um, yeah. demonstration going here to show that you can be in focus, uh, um, even at larger screens, and yeah. that's on a Mark II. A Mark II with a 150 inch Fresnel in there, yeah. Okay, Trying so that's showing you what you can do. That's when these projectors really start to shine, because if you try to factor in what a flat panel would cost at that oh, price, yeah. it would be it would be outrageous. <laughs> And then on the other side, you're actually doing a demonstration. Is that showing a matte white screen versus one of your one of your other types of screens? Yeah. So out there we have uh, our current 120-inch Fresnel screen, mm -hmm. and then just a normal white wall that we threw some paint on to showcase. If you have a white wall at home, mm -hmm. this is what it'll look like when you've got all this ambient light on it. So if you've got a dark room. Mm -hmm. 
you might not need a Fresnel screen, yeah. but if you have a lot of light coming in, you've got a lot of glass and again, a lot of sunlight. The difference is amazing. When you look at a, when you look at a projection system, you have to factor in the projector, exactly. the screen, and the room. And if you do the, pick the right combination of projector and screen, you can, you can, you can get the most out of your room. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then the last thing you're showing is the benefits of gaming <laughs> on a projector. So what are you doing over there? Yeah, so we've got four player Mario Kart set up. Which, uh, first off, we've got low latency on our projectors. We're really mm -hmm. proud of that. We've mm -hmm. got the gaming mode to ma minimize the latency down to 4.2 milliseconds, and mm -hmm. we want people to feel that mm -hmm. through playing it. So we have four player Mario Kart set up. Mm -hmm. We invite people to come play, you know, race each other, race some of the employees here, mm -hmm. and get a chance to win some freebies, but mostly just to showcase how nice the image is when You've got four people playing. Each of them have a massive screen to look exactly. at. Exactly. So if, you, if you're using a 120, 130 inch screen, everybody has a 75. So playing on a, on a projector on a massive screen is a different experience. And like you really said, the, with the low latency in the game modes, if you're just a casual gamer or someone that just mm -hmm. is competing with your friends, it's, it's perfect for that type of stuff. Exactly, yeah. And again, okay. I think a big thing is seeing and feeling is believing, and we really just want people to experience it. Okay. So Chris, I was just getting ready to leave the booth, but I noticed there's one more thing we didn't talk about. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Um, so what is this cabinet back here? Well, you want to get closer? You yeah, yeah let's go take a All look right. at it. So yeah, this uh, we're calling the Eclipse uh, Laser TV cabinet. It's just supposed to be part of the all-in-one package here. You've got the Mark III and you've got the fluorizing screen. You get the camera with it, everything will sync together so that you push power, you turn it on. The Mark III will come out of the cabinet, the fluorizing will rise up to the exact level you want it to be, and you can get everything just, you know, seamless without okay. any issues. We're okay. having to set up every single thing every single time. Okay, so so what we were just talking about, you and I, was the fact that you had the ability on the on the Mark III to do the the what did you call it? The the virtual masking? Yes sir. So the projector the screen goes up to just two thirty five, right? And then it, it can go up it or, or it can go up to sixteen by nine. So now you have the projector, the screen, and the cabinet. And I will tell you that um, the design is, is pretty unique. I actually think it's quite attractive. <laughs> you know, it's just a really good way to hide a projector when it's turned on. Yeah, and it just matches more of our aesthetic, going for the uh, nice black clean look. Now, um, when will this be available and this is gonna be shipping? So we are targeting all of this in Q3 mm -hmm. to have it all be available at the same time. We mm -hmm. want anyone who wants to just get the number one solution for everything mm -hmm. to be able to purchase it all at once. Okay, so an all-in-one theater. Yes, sir. All right, so I wanted to make sure you guys knew about that as well before I let you guys go. So excited to be able to review the Aurora Pro Mark III when it becomes available. If I want to learn more about um, Mexico's lineup of projectors, yes. where should I go? Please visit our website directly, Mexico.com. We've got new announcements all the time, and you'll see all the information about the Mark III as it becomes available. Okay, and also check out our review of the Aurora Pro Mark II, as well as the Nova Mini, which both won awards on our site. Chris, thank you for hanging you out so and much, talking man. to me, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.